the first topic in the second unit that we are going to get started is uh, soil permeability or uh, nothing but uh, flow through the soil uh, the characteristic or the property of uh, that particular soil which governs the flow through the soil is nothing but we call it as permeability so what is permeability how do we determine the permeability of the soil depending on the permeability of the soil how does the flow happens through that particular soil even across the cross section of any earthen material are below the cross section of a structure or uh, whatever it is so how this understanding regarding the flow characteristics of the soil is important let us try to uh, come across with that and what are the various factors that affects the flow through the soil uh, with regard to the permeability aspect we'll try to understand so uh, in soil mechanics are uh, instead in foundation engineering anything with regard to the geotechnical engineering aspect so the flow through the soils is very important for us to understand because if i am referring to let's say a foundation to be constructed so if i want to construct a foundation let's say for example an open foundation or a shallow foundation okay so if i want to go for a shallow foundation what we need to do we need to excavate some soil out we, we need to make an open pit and uh, once we make an open pit if the ground water table what is available if it is near or above that uh, depth where you have excavated so what you will see is the water flow will happen because of the existence of water table there so once the water flow starts happening into that particular open pit which you have excavated then uh, there is an issue because you are required to construct a foundation there but when you made an excavation water started seeping into that so you don't want water to be seeping in there okay so in such case if i don't want water to be seeping in what measures are to be taken if i want to take some measures first before what measures are to be taken i should be knowing whether that particular soil in which i am taking up the foundation is likely to have uh, more pervious nature or less pervious nature so depending on the nature of that permeability of soil we will be able to understand okay whether more amount of water will seep into that open pit or less amount of water will seep into the open pit let's say for example i have a sandy soil in which if i am making an open pit excavation i am just trying to dig some soil so as the pore size or the size of the void spaces in the sandy soil deposit is big size of the void is big so what uh, we would see is relatively more amount of water will be seeping into that particular rapid which you have excavated whereas in the case of a clay soil deposit clay relatively the size of the void in that particular clay soil deposit is very very small the void size is very very small so in such case the flow happening through the void space is relatively less in quantity so in such case if i make an open excavation in such soils also relative effect what you are going to be seeing will be lesser when compared to that of an excavation that you carry out in the case of the coarse grain soil so that is very important for us to understand apart from this let's say for example i am trying to construct any structure on some soil deposit which is said to be fully saturated okay so when you are trying to construct any structure on that particular soil deposit due to the loads what are expected to be coming on that ground from the structure so what happens is water which is there in the void spaces will start getting squeezed out let's say i have a sponge which is filled uh, all the voids of that uh, sponge are filled with water now once you start applying the loading on the sponge what do we see the void uh, water which is there in the void spaces will start getting expelled so in the same way when you start applying the loading on the ground because of the structure what you wanted to construct due to that load water from the void spaces starts coming out due to the excess pore water pressures which are building up in the void spaces the water particles will start getting squeezed out of that particular uh, void when the water particle is trying to come out how much time does the water particle require to come out of that particular soil medium so that the so uh, due to the load what you are trying to apply the so called compression or consolidation whatever is expected to be happening in that particular soil will be completed in what period of time whether it requires one year or 10 years or 20 years or 100 years to have your so called consolidation process or uh, settlements to be completed in that particular ground before you take up the construction so how much time it required so uh, in order to know how much time it requires it totally depends on what is called as how does the flow characteristics of that particular soil are whether that soil is more permeable or less permeable if it is more permeable the rate at which the water can dissipate is high if it is less permeable as the void size is small so water particle takes more time to find the interconnected void path 
to come out of that particular soil medium okay so that is very important for us to know depending on the condition of the soil depending on the type of the soil the soil skeleton structure the type of soil grains and various other characteristics the so called flow characteristic of that particular soil will be depending on and in case if i am trying to take up the construction of an embankment it could be earth an embankment okay for the purpose of uh, construction of any reservoir if the purpose of construction of that embankment is for storing water then what happens is if the embankment material what you have used has got relatively large void spaces in between the soil grain arrangement soil particle uh, structural arrangement so if the void size is more what happens is the water which you wanted to store it on the upstream will no more remain on the upstream because the large void spaces will allow the water to pass through those void space and uh, you will not have the water getting stored on the upstream so we have to understand depending on the problem that we are dealing with whether that particular uh, soil has got more capability of allowing the water to pass through it or less capability of allowing the water to pass through it in some cases of construction you require high permeable soils in some cases of construction you require low permeable soils that depends on the type of construction that you are dealing with let's say for example if it is an earth an embankment used for uh, construction of what is called as your reservoir so in such case you don't require water to be seeping from upstream to downstream because once the water is passing through the interconnected void spaces from the upstream to downstream you don't have any more water getting uh, stored on the upstream side of your embankment okay so uh, whereas in some cases let's say if i want to recharge the ground water there is heavy rainfall and uh, due to that heavy rainfall you will obviously have a large amount of water being accumulated on the ground okay so uh, if you wanted that water to be percolating into the ground then uh, what should be the uh, characteristics of the ground the uh, area where you want to have more amount of water to be seeping in let's say for example some grounds play fields in such case if there is a rain you don't want water to be stagnated on those uh, play fields for long period of time you wanted that water to be percolating uh, into the deeper layers of the ground so that no ground will be available for uh, subsequent activities of uh, conducting games and so on okay so in such case what you require is you require some soil or the ground should be in a way that the void uh, ratio of that particular soil or uh, the subsequent voids that are existing in the soil should be of relatively larger in size so that no through that large void spaces water can easily pass through and uh, the uh, filtration can happen through that particular soil medium okay so depending on the case where we are looking at so some cases we require soil with lower permeability some cases we require the soil with some certain characteristics where low amount of water can uh, flow through it in some case high amount of water can uh, flow through it so it totally depends on the problem that we are dealing with yeah so in soil mechanics and in foundation engineering you must uh, know how much water is flowing through a soil uh, in uh, certain period of time so this knowledge is required in the construction of an earthen embankment or maybe in understanding how much quantity of seepage happens across the cross section of a dam it could be a concrete dam uh, generally in the case of concrete dam uh, we uh, theoretically assume that you no know, seepage happens from the bottom of your uh, concrete dam if it is an earth embankment so seepage can happen through the cross section of the embankment or from the bottom of the embankment also your seepage can happen through the soil medium so in all such different cases sometimes like as i said you make an open excavation and water starts seeping into that but you don't want water to be uh, existing in that okay in that open pit so you are required to dewater that okay so in the process of dewatering how much what is the rate at which the water is coming into the pit and at what rate you are trying to dewater the pit is something what you require to know that will be understanding only depending on how is the flow characteristics in that particular soil so now let us understand that the subsequent uh, property which governs the flow through the soil is nothing but we define it as permeability permeability of that particular soil okay so permeability is basically defined as the capacity of the soil to allow water which is passing through it okay so how much amount of water is going to be passing through that particular uh, soil through a given cross section over a certain period of time so depending on that we will be saying what is the permeability of that particular soil i can repeat the capability of the soil to allow the water to pass through it through a particular given cross section within a given period of time so that whatever the water that is trying to pass through the quantity of water that is trying to pass through 
will be uh, defining the characteristic or the property of that particular soil with regard to the flow that is what we call it as the permeability you can uh, look at a surface here uh, which has got more of uh, large void spaces when you are uh, trying to pour water on the top you could see the water is trying to seep through uh, through that particular surface why is the water seeping through the through that particular surface because of the interconnected void space say when does the flow happen flow generally do not happen because of the water available okay flow is going to happen only when because of what is called as your uh, energy difference or rather i can also call it as your head difference flow generally happens from what is called as upstream side to that of your downstream side depending on what is the total head difference existing between the so called upstream and downstream so that would govern uh, how much rate of flow would happen through that particular uh, soil that is one case and second case is how are your interconnected void spaces existing in that particular soil do you have the interconnected voids because water particles starts entering into one void and from there it searches for where does the other void space is available so that no it can enter here and move on to the next subsequent void uh, spaces so the flow is going to happen through the soil medium only when you have interconnected void path existing through that particular soil okay so whenever you have got an interconnected void path so through that interconnected void path water starts traveling or any fluid starts traveling from what is called as a higher energy gradient to that of your lower energy gradient or higher head value to that of your lower head value soils are said to be permeable due to the existence of interconnected voids through which water flow from uh, points of higher energy to that of your points of lower energy say let's say exam for example Yeah, you have some water body available here, and uh, this water body through the interconnected uh, void path. So this is the interconnected void path. Interconnected void path in the sense pore spaces. Okay, one pore space is connected to the other pore space. From that to the other pore space, the water is trying to flow through. If you look at here, only through the pervious soil medium, in uh, only the flow is happening, not through the impervious uh, soil medium. Why is that flow is not happening through the impervious soil medium? Because impervious soil medium. has got least uh, interconnected void spaces because of the small void sizes existing so uh, in the case of that impervious soil medium the flow characteristics are the flow that happens through that particular uh, small interconnected void path is relatively less when compared to that of the uh, flow that takes place through the large interconnected uh, void paths okay so because of the total head difference between upstream to downstream sir how do i understand which is an upstream which is a downstream to know from where to where the flow is going to be happening say for example in your home you have a tank on the roof of the building and in your bathroom if you open the tap or in your kitchen if you open the tap you see the water flowing through that tap why is the flow, water flowing through the tap because the total head level of the water in that overhead tank is higher than that of the total head at the exit of this particular tap so because of the total head difference water starts flowing from what is called as an upstream to that of your downstream okay uh, let's say i have a bucket of water let's say this is my bucket in this bucket i have some water till here this is some point a and this is some point b now can you tell me whether the water will flow from point a to point b because point a is at a higher elevation point b is at a lower elevation okay before uh, i go much in details of this uh, first let me make you understand there is something what is called as uh, total head how do we calculate total head from bernoulli's principle if you can go back to your fluid mechanics course what you have learned so what does bernoulli's uh, principle talks about wherever you want to calculate the amount of total head total head is nothing but it is the summation of your elevation head plus pressure head plus kinetic head kinetic head otherwise i can also call it as velocity head okay so elevation head how do we write down what is mean by elevation head let's say i am choosing some reference datum datum in the sense some reference from this reference at what height your so, uh, so called point a or point b is existing let's say my point b is existing at an elevation head of something uh, heb uh, point a is there at a elevation head which i am representing it as let's say hea yeah this reference from where i am trying to measure the so called elevation head is what we write it as datum i hope you learned what is this datum means in your surveying 
datum is nothing but a reference surface from where you are trying to measure the elevations or so called heights of your respective points okay so my total head what i am trying to calculate at any point is nothing but it is equal to elevation head with respect to that particular point what i am trying to talk about plus pressure head plus your kinetic head or i can also write it as velocity head okay whereas in the uh, how do we write down this uh, elevation head means from the chosen datum at what height that particular point is there that is nothing but it is your elevation head is what we can write it as okay and how do we write down this pressure head pressure head is nothing but we write it as u by gamma w because i am referring to that of uh, the flow through the soil so here pressure head refers to that of the uh, with what pressure the water is trying to flow through that particular interconnected void space which we call it as your pore water pressure okay so that uh, so called pressure head or pore water pressure is what we are going to be writing it as u by gamma w okay so u small u here whatever i have represented refers to that of what is called as pore water pressure small u refers to pore water pressure in the complete soil mechanics wherever you come across the letter small u it indicates pore water pressure so water uh, what is the pressure of water inside that pore space is what we call it as pore water pressure divided by gamma w gamma w is nothing but the unit weight of water so pore water pressure by the unit weight of water tells you how much is the pressure head corresponding to that particular uh, flow with regard to the uh, water and the other one is your uh, velocity head so what is mean by velocity head velocity head we write it as or the kinetic head from whatever you have learned we write it as v square by 2g is what we call it as your uh, velocity head okay now when it comes to the case of soil mechanics do we consider all these heads like elevation head plus pressure head plus velocity head to define what is the total amount of head value that is available or uh, what is it going to be basically we are saying this particular flow whatever is happening is through the uh, soil whenever we say it is through the soil as the size of the void space is relatively small then the velocity with uh, which the flow is going to be happening through that particular small void space is also something relatively considerable uh, we say the head due to that uh, velocity aspect is relatively less because the velocity with which the flow is happening to the void space is relatively small due to the small void interconnected path whatever is available so if velocity with which the flow is happening is small then uh, square of that smaller term is further small divided by 2g is further more small so what we say from the discussion is your so called uh, velocity head whatever you are trying to come across with in the case of geotechnical engineering are in uh, simple terms whenever you are trying to talk about the flow through the soil the amount of velocity head what you refer to is nothing but it is considered to be negligible when compared to that of the amount of elevation head or uh, the so called pressure head so in uh, the case of flow through the soil wherever you come across the calculations with regard to the total head we define the total head as simply nothing but elevation head plus pressure head okay so this is what we uh, understand as your calculation of your total head so simply we say total head is nothing but it is equal to elevation head plus pressure head okay so wherever we talk about the flow is happening through the soil we will try to understand how is the flow happening which is your upstream which is your downstream so what is your total head difference which is governing the flow to happen through that particular soil i repeat total head difference total head difference means what how much is the head available at this point how much is the head available at this point so depending on the head available at this point and at this point the flow we say okay due to the total head difference between this point to this point the flow is happening through the soil okay now let me come back to this bucket of water which i was trying to refer to i have marked two points point a and uh, point b i said whether the flow happens from point a to point b or whether the flow happens from point b to point a are are we not going to have any flow happening from point a to point b or point b to point a basic answer is actually flow is not going to be happening in this case though point is at point a is at a higher elevation point b is at a lower elevation from your chosen datum still you will not see the flow happening from point a to point b why i said total head because 
the so called total head difference is something which governs the flow to be happening from one point to the other point so whenever there is a total head difference between one point to the other point then only you are going to see the flow is happening through the cross section of any material okay it could be the flow in a pipe or it could be the flow through the soil or whatever it is wherever it is so whenever you have a total head difference or so called energy head difference whichever we were trying to talk about earlier okay so whenever you have the total head difference between one point to the other point then only the flow is going to be happening from uh, one point to the other point here if i start calculating what is my total head available at point a how much is my total head available at point a so total head available at point a if i want to calculate so total head available at point a how do we write down it's nothing but the elevation head value at point a plus the pressure head value at point a so how much is my elevation head from the bottom let's say this so called point a is at a height of uh, some 3 meters from your chosen datum let's say point b is at some 2 meters from the bottom now what is my elevation head corresponding to point a elevation head corresponding to the point a with respect to the datum whatever i have chosen let's say my point a is at a height of 3 meters so my elevation head is what i am considering it as 3 meters because it is in the positive side from the reference data so plus 3 meters is what is my elevation head now my objective is to understand how much is the pressure head corresponding to point a if i know the pressure head corresponding to point a then i can substitute to calculate how much is my total head at point a okay so where is the point a point a is at the surface of water now that point a is exposed to atmosphere i repeat point a is exposed to atmosphere when the point a is exposed to atmosphere then the pressure head corresponding to the point a position is what we call it as here atmospheric pressure head atmospheric pressure head value is nothing but it is equal to zero i repeat your so called atmospheric pressure head is nothing but it is simply equal to zero so my total head value corresponding to the position of point a is nothing but 3 meters now similarly if i start writing down what is my total head value corresponding to the point b it's nothing but it is here elevation head corresponding to point b how much is the elevation head corresponding to point b point b is at a elevation of 2 meters from your datum plus i need to know what is my pressure head corresponding to the point b so how do we calculate this pressure head we have got simple devices to that of complicated devices to calculate what is your pressure head existing at any point okay now maybe from fluid mechanics also if you want to understand how to calculate the pressure head you might have heard a word called as barometer or a manometer uh, devices which can be used or which can be simply inserted into that particular uh, place where you want to measure your uh, pressure head in the similar way let me simply take a stand pipe i am just placing a stand pipe at the position of point b i am just trying uh, taking a stand uh, tube a tube i am just trying to insert into that bucket of water till the point b position now once i insert that uh, tube into that uh, bucket at point b what will be the rise in water level in that uh, stand pipe or simply manometer tube is what i can call it as water gets raised till this particular level in that particular stand pipe now what is the rise of water level in the stand pipe is nothing but it is going to indicate you what is called as your pressure head existing at the point b how much is the pressure head existing means the rise of water level in the stand pipe whatever you have placed our manometer or uh, any other pressure measuring device that you are going to be placing so that will be telling you how much is the amount of pressure head existing at that particular point so from simple geometry or from simple understanding i can say that your water which gets raised in the stand pipe is up to a height of 1 meter only from your point b position so obvious that your pressure head corresponding to point b position is uh, nothing but it is equal to 1 meter so the total head what corresponds to your point b is nothing but it is equal to 3 meters so my total head corresponding to point a was 3 meters and total head corresponding to point b was also 3 meters so when does the flow happens from one point to the other point whenever there is a total head difference between one point to the other point then only the flow is going to be happening from one point to the other point when there is no total head difference between one point to the other point uh, the total head value at point a is 3 meters total head value at point b is 3 meters so there is no difference in total head values either between point a to point b or point b to point a so obvious that there will not be any flow happening from point a to point b or point b to point a okay let's say for example i have i am choosing another point okay this point i am calling it as point c 
if this point c is inside the bucket and if point c is outside the bucket in the sense let's say at point c if i make an opening or at point c if i do not make any opening if opening is not there at point c for your bucket will the flow happen from point a to point c no in case if i make an opening at uh, to that bucket at point c i just make a hole to that bucket once i make the hole to that bucket in any case once you have a hole to your bucket what do you see water starts flowing through the bucket yes through the hole water starts flowing out now why is the water started uh, flowing out because there was some total head difference between uh, so called uh, any point inside the bucket to that of the point what you are uh, looking at at the exit of that bucket exit of the bucket in the sense the point where you made the hole to that particular bucket so how do i know whether the total head difference is there or not so let us give a try and uh, understand how to calculate that so called uh, total head difference uh, between uh, any point inside the bucket and uh, with respect to the point c what i am uh, referring to okay so let's say the elevation head corresponding to this point c is something 2.2 meters so let's say elevation head from the chosen reference datum the point c is at an elevation of 2.2 meters where you have a hole to your bucket so the elevation head corresponding to point c is nothing but 2.2 meters so my total head at point c if i want to calculate so it's nothing but it is equal to elevation head which is equal to 2.2 meters plus how much is the pressure head corresponding to point c now if you can see here this point c is exposed to atmosphere why is it exposed to atmosphere i made a hole there to the bucket so that uh, position where the hole is there is exposed to the atmospheric condition and the pressure head corresponding to the point c when this point is exposed to the atmospheric condition so the pressure head value is simply nothing but it is equal to zero or if you want insert a sand pipe here just at the outside of your bucket so once i have a stand pipe or a manometric tube or a barometric tube inserted at that exit of your bucket at point c you don't see any rise in water level in that stand pipe which indicates that the pressure head value is simply equal to zero once the pressure head is considered to be simply zero then uh, what i can say is your uh, total head what you are trying to calculate at point c comes out to be what is called as 2.2 meters whereas your total head inside uh, the bucket at any point maybe at point a or point b or whatever point that i consider inside the bucket is 3 meters so the total head corresponding to point c at the exit where you made a hole to the bucket so is nothing but it is equal to 2.2 meters so because of the total head difference how much is the total head difference one place 3 meters at the other place the total head uh, value is 2.2 meters so because of the total head difference of 3 minus 2.2 that is 0.8 meters due to the total head difference between uh, one point to the other point is 0.8 meters the flow is happening from uh, inside the bucket to that of your outside the bucket now will the water completely get uh, drained out of the bucket i made a hole to the bucket at point c and i started seeing that once the hole is made the water started flowing out of the bucket and uh, will the water inside the bucket will completely get drained no water will get drained only up to a height of what is called as 0.8 meter uh, from the top surface of your water level why is it not get uh, why the water completely is not getting drained out because you had only a total head difference of 0.8 meters only because of the total head difference of 0.8 meters only you are going to see the flow is happening from the bucket from so called point a to point c or point b to point c or whatever it is so due to that existing uh, total head difference between one point to the other point then only you are going to see the flow happening through that particular soil okay that's what we have uh, indicated in this particular slide a soil is highly pervious a soil is considered to be highly pervious when uh, water can flow through it easily so whenever the flow that can happen through that particular soil at a easy rate are easily if the flow can happen through that particular soil without much difficulty then we say that particular uh, soil to be uh, highly pervious and if the flow can happen at a relatively uh, slower rate if the flow can happen through that particular soil at a slower rate 
then uh, we saw uh, we consider that particular soil to be relatively uh, impervious in nature relatively impervious in the sense the rate at which the flow is happening through that particular soil is relatively less so because of which we consider the flow characteristics of that particular soil to be relatively impervious okay so in such case if the soil is relatively impervious the permeability of that particular soil is very less or very very less rather so in which the amount of water which flows from one point to the other point in that particular soil medium though there is a total head difference between one point to the other point but the rate of flow that happens through that particular soil is going to be less over a period of time the amount of water which flows from one point to the other point is going to be relatively less in the previous case also let's say my bucket bucket surface was almost impervious if the bucket surface had some pore spaces then obviously the water might have flown from one point to the other point uh, out of your bucket but as the bucket was relatively impervious in nature so we do not have uh, water flowing out of that until and unless you make an opening opening indicating that it's a pervious or an interconnected void path which is now getting developed due to which the water is flowing from that particular soil okay highly pervious soil is nothing but we call it as gravel in the case of gravel the amount of water which can flow through that particular gravel medium is relatively very very high because of the large void spaces existing in that particular soil when it comes to the clay as the size of the clay particles is relatively small obvious that the void spaces in between that clay particles is going to be very very further small and uh, finding an interconnected void path through that small void uh, existing in that particular soil medium is relatively going to take you more time for the water to travel from one point to the other point through that particular soil medium so that's the reason we say the rate of flow that takes place through the clay soil deposit is relatively very less when compared to that uh, the rate of flow that happens through that of your uh, gravel soil so whenever the rate of flow rate means the amount of flow that happens through the soil if it is high over a certain period of time okay so then we consider that particular soil to be highly pervious and if the amount of water which is flowing through that particular soil is relatively less over a period of time then we consider it to be uh, more or less impervious or uh, low pervious uh, soils and uh, rocky uh, rocks are uh, mostly considered to be impermeable in nature impermeable in the sense it will uh, not have what is called as uh, interconnected void path sir is it guaranteed that the rocks will not have interconnected void path not exactly rocks also will certainly have some small interconnected void paths but however when compared to that of the soils to that of your rock strata so rocks are more considered to be in uh, impermeable when compared to that of your uh, soil so the study of uh, the flow of water through the permeable soil medium is very important in the case of your complete geotechnical engineering not only in soil mechanics even in the foundation engineering wherever you talk about in geotechnical engineering so the study regarding the flow that takes place flow of water that takes place through the soil through a soil in the sense here we are referring to the soil because our pervious material what we are looking at is the soil in some other cases material could be anything else it need not be soil it could be some other material so how the flow characteristics happen flow in the sense flow need not be always with regard to the fluid which is water sometimes it could be any other fluids or gases also how is the flow with regard to the gas is happening so all that studies are going to be governed with regard to how uh, you have the interconnected path through which the flow can takes place so what is the importance of uh, permeability i said uh, the permeability or uh, understanding the flow through the soil is important in all those places wherever you come across with the structures like retaining walls earthen dams are knowing about the settlement how much settlement is going to be happening why does the settlement happen if the voids are filled with water and depending on the rate at which the water is coming out of those void spaces so your time required for the settlement would also be governed so in all different cases whichever we come across stability of slopes even in the stability of the slopes depending on how the flow is happening through that particular slope whether that slope is going to be stable or not if flow is happening then factor of safety of the slope comes down if flow is not happening the factor of safety of the slope is going to be relatively higher so depending on that we will be able to understand 
how is that structure going to be whether it is going to be stable safe and are, are we having any issues with regard to that particular structure is what we will try to understand and in some places we will try to use some filtering medium filtering medium in the sense some soil grains or uh, large particles are used for what is called as a proper drainage path uh, which is provided so even in the design of those uh, filtration filter uh, filtering medium uh, you will be required to understand uh, how is that filters are to be designed filters are to be designed in the sense how the openings are to be available uh, in that particular uh, design aspect if large opening is there rated with the flow happens through that particular large voids is more okay but however whether uh, your uh, deposited materials in that particular fluid will be getting settled let's say if it is a sewage you have some sewage flowing okay so in the stp uh, treatment plant uh, your uh, in any of the standard treatment plants if you come across with sewage treatment plants so you you have what is called as filtration mediums okay so in uh, one filtration medium you put some uh, gravelly soil deposit in another you put some sandy soil deposit so water starts seeping from one layer to that of the other layer so that no so your so called treatment process is also taking place because only the fluid particles are allowed uh, and uh, your large suspended solids or suspended materials existing in that sewage will be getting uh, filtered because of the design of your filtration medium so wherever you use filters in the process of design so in that design of filters also you will be required to understand how much rate of flow you wanted to have accordingly your filters are to be designed by providing large void space or large openings to your filtering medium or small uh, small openings to your filtering medium now what are the various factors okay what are the various factors uh, that are going to be affecting the permeability of soils we come across with various uh, factors that would affect the permeability of the soils to start with the particle size in that soil skeleton structure in that soil grain arrangement what is the particle size depending on the particle size if it is a gravelly particle if it is a sandy particle if it is a clay particle depending on the type of uh, particles that are forming that soil skeleton structure your uh, rate of flow that can happen through the void space existing there would be depending on if the large particles are forming in the soil structure there the size of the void is also relatively large in such case so if void size is more obviously if the light size uh, void size is big relatively then uh, amount of water which can pass through that void size is also more okay and the next is void ratio of the soil if the void if the soil's void ratio is high how do we define void ratio volume of voids by volume of soil uh, volume of solids so once we say if the void ratio of the soil is high it means the volume of voids existing in that soil is high if the volume of voids existing in the soil is high you have all possibilities of having higher uh, quantity of water flow happening through that particular soil okay so if the void ratio is high the permeability of the soil is also going to be high if the particle size is high then permeability of the soil is going to be high next like properties of uh, pore fluid so what does this properties of the fluid uh, pore fluid means depending on let's say for example viscosity or unit weight of the uh, fluid which is trying to uh, travel through the interconnected void path here our fluid what we are looking at is water okay so through that void space water whichever is trying to seep through okay depending on the viscosity of the water or depending on the density of water which is trying to flow through that particular uh, void your uh, so called permeability of the soil would also be getting affected if the viscosity of the fluid is high then you have more resistance against the flow of your fluid so obvious that permeability of that soil is considered to be less if the density of uh, that fluid is more because of the higher the density of the fluid particle so because uh, as the density of the particle is more then effect of gravity on those fluid particles is going to be more then easily you will have the water uh, flowing from one point to the other point because of that uh, effect of gravity on uh, higher dense particles or uh, higher density particles so in such case your permeability of the soil is going to be higher next is depending on the shape of the particle also how does the shape is going to be governing your uh, yeah how do we say the effect of uh, shape is going to be there uh, on your uh, soil means if i have round shaped particle and if i have angular shaped particle let's say if it is round shaped particles this is one particle this is another particle assume they are round particles 
okay so when you look at the round shaped particles what you will see is that the relative void size what get formed in between the round shaped particles is bigger when compared to that of the angle shaped uh, angular shaped particles let's say i have one particle like this i have another particle like this i have another uh, particle like this because of this angular shapes whatever you have interlocking between one grain to the other grain uh, would be relatively high because of that proper interlocking uh, at one corner to that of the other corner of the particle the amount of water which can uh, percolate through this small void whichever is available there is relatively less okay so in the case of round shaped particles are uh, soil grains which are relatively rounded in nature you'll have more amount of uh, relatively more amount of water passing through them so permeability of the soil is high if you have angular shaped particles relative amount of water which can percolate through that is less so i can say permeability of the soil in such cases is less next uh, structure of uh, soil mass depending on the structure of the soil mass we are going to be saying that uh, permeability of the soil is going to be less or uh, more so if the soil skeleton structure let's say if it is a honeycomb structure so as the large void spaces are there you have all possibilities that more amount of water can pass through it or if it is let's say for example a comparison between flocculent structure to that of a dispersed structure so when your uh, soil skeleton structure is flocculent then uh, in such case uh, relatively relative comparison i am just trying to make okay so relatively you have more amount of water which can flow through that particular cross section of the soil which has got what is called as a flocculent structure when compared to that of your uh, dispersed structure likewise degree of saturation how does the degree of saturation affects the permeability of the soil means if the soil is fully saturated then you have more of voids which are already filled with water so uh, easily water can uh, travel from what is called as an upstream to downstream through all those voids which are filled with water if the void is entrapped by air you cannot have the water particle easily flowing through those uh, entrapped spaces of air so in such case your uh, rate of flow happening through that particular soil is also relatively less so if the degree of saturation is 100% you will have permeability of, you will say the permeability of the soil is relatively high and if the degree of saturation is less in the sense if the soil is partially saturated or uh, not saturated in such case the rate of flow happening through that particular soil is relatively less and uh, how does the next parameter adsorbed water so how does this adsorbed water affect the permeability of the soil means uh, what do we mean by adsorbed water adsorbed water is nothing but it's a kind of a water filament or water surface uh, which is getting formed on the particle where this water is strongly bonded with your uh, surface of your uh, particle let's say it could be a, for example clay particle in the case of uh, clay particles we said water particle gets adsorbed by clay particle so whenever you have some clay soil deposits in which water is adsorbed by your clay particle so automatically what happens is that the water particle which got adsorbed by your clay particle is not in free state to have the movement from Uh, upstream to downstream so as the water surface what is getting formed on your clay particle is trying to decrease the remaining uh, uh, void size which is existing so obvious that your permeability of the soil there is slightly coming down and next because of the entrapped air and organic impu impurities in water if your water uh, is containing entrapped air air bubbles or maybe some organic impurities uh, present in that particular uh, water then uh, obvious that your water cannot easily pass through because your organic impurities are small suspended particles will go and occupy into the void spaces which are available and which decreases the interconnected uh, void size there and relatively your flow rate decreases which in turn says that the permeability of the soil is coming down next is the effect of temperature how does the temperature affects the permeability of the soil let's say uh, we said earlier itself your uh, fluid properties are going to be uh, affecting the permeability of the soil like say for example if the temperature is high what is going to happen with regard to the viscosity of the fluid viscosity of the fluid decreases it means resistance against the flow decreases once the resistance against the flow decreases then rate of flow that happens through the interconnected void spaces is relatively high okay so uh, with increase in temperature the permeability of the soil also increases next is stratification of soil okay so if uh, soil has got uh, 
a kind of lay, uh, generally how does the soil formation takes place maybe 100 years before uh, some soil particles got deposited there one layer of soil uh, formation might have happened last 30 years another layer of soil uh, formation might have happened last five years before another layer of soil formation might have happened so over one layer you have another layer formed over that layer you have another layer formed and that's how you have layers of soils that are getting formed okay so in such soil deposit layered soil deposit if the flow happening through that particular layered soil is parallel to the soil layers that means you have your soil layers like this if the flow is parallel to these soil layers the rate at which the flow happens through this uh, layered soil is different when compared to the flow when it is happening perpendicular to this soil layers okay so the rate of flow <coughs> that happens through the soil layer when uh, the flow is happening parallel to the soil layers the rate of flow is high when compared to that of the rate of flow that takes place when the flow is happening perpendicular to your uh, layered soil okay so why is it and so on we'll try to understand little later okay so everything whatever i have talked about are uh, explained in each of the slide so if uh, you wanted you can uh, clearly go through that so uh, how is the particle size affecting the permeability void ratio affecting properties of fluids how they are uh, affecting and so on like the shape of the particle structure of soil mass degree of saturation adsorbed water entrapped air and organic impurities effect of temperature effect of stratification of soil and so on next is water flow condition how does the water flow through the soil whether we are going to have what is called as a flow which is continuous without uh, one water particle continuously moving adjacent to the other water particle without disturbing it or we have uh, mixing of path of your water particle and accordingly the water is trying to travel from upstream to downstream okay so the water flow is generally divided into two categories one is laminar flow and the other is uh, turbulent flow okay so what do we mean by laminar flow laminar flow is nothing but it indicates that each water particle follows a specific path particular path and that is not going to one water particle if it is trying to travel like this and uh, another water particle if it is trying to travel like this these two water particles will continuously travel in the same manner they will not be intersecting anywhere uh, with each other the path of one water particle will not intersect with the path of the other water particle okay such kind of flow of uh, your uh, water through the interconnected void space is what we are referring to that of uh, laminar flow and the other is uh, turbulent flow what does this turbulent flow indicates it's a random path and are an irregular path are a twisted uh, momentum uh, moment based path in the sense randomly your water particle will be traveling disturbing the other uh, water particles flow so such kind of flow is what we call it as your turbulent flow so whenever we are trying to talk about the flow through the soil we are not considering the flow that is what is called as a turbulent flow through the soil medium we are, what we are referring is nothing but it is here uh, laminar uh, flow that's a steady state flow continuously the direction of flow or uh, the position of one water particle to that of the other particle the flow path is continuous where they are not going to be intersecting with each other okay next uh, as we said whenever there is a total head difference between upstream to downstream then because of the total head difference we are saying that there is a flow happening from one point to the other point let's say for example here is one point here is another point in the soil strata okay so this complete whatever you could see is nothing but it is a soil and what we understand is the flow is happening through this soil from one point to the other point why is the flow is happening through this soil uh, from one point to the other point because the total head corresponding to the soil here i repeat total head corresponding to the soil here and the total head corresponding to the soil here are not same why is it not same because if you try to calculate the elevation head is something pressure head if you try to get at this point 1 is something different and elevation head at point 2 is same as that of the elevation head at of point 1 because the soil is what you are considering it as on a horizontal surface so elevation head at point 1 and point 2 are same but your total uh, pressure head corresponding to point 1 has got a higher pressure head at point 2 you have got a lower pressure head pressure head in the sense 
take a stand pipe inside a stand pipe there or place a stand tube let me draw that yeah if i place a stand pipe the water gets raised in that stand pipe till here which indicates that the amount of pressure head existing at that point one is something high and when i am trying to insert a stand pipe here at point two the amount of water gets uh, which gets raised in that particular stand pipe at point two is only till here so total head at point one total head at point two when you are calculating there is a total head difference between point one to point two which is considered as your uh, higher uh, gradient point so point one refers to that of the higher gradient point whereas your point two considered to be the lower gradient point why because at point one you have higher uh, total head value when compared to that of your point two so because of the total head difference between point one to point two the water is trying to flow from point one to point two through your soil okay so how much is that total head difference between point one to point two so that total head difference which governs the flow between point one to point two is what we write it as delta h delta h indicates the total head difference between one point to that of the other point which is governing the flow okay now what is the length of water particle or uh, length over which the water particle is trying to travel so that it reaches from what is called as your uh, upstream to that of your downstream let's say for example this is some soil water particle is entering into the soil here and coming out of the soil here now what is your total head difference which is governing the flow delta h is the total head difference is what we have seen which is governing the flow okay so due to that total head difference of delta h the water particle which is entering into the soil element here is coming out at this particular uh, position now what is the length or what is the distance that your water particle has traveled before it is said to be moving from what is called as an upstream point to that of your downstream point so that distance what your water particle has traveled can we exactly say what is that distance that your water particle has traveled not surely because water particle will not exactly travel horizontally or vertically something like that water particle will try to find where is the interconnected void path only through that interconnected void path the particle can travel okay so if your interconnected void path is not horizontal not vertical you cannot exactly say how is your particle of uh, water traveling from uh, upstream to that of your downstream but however in a simplified manner we consider the interconnected void path or the distance traveled by your water particle is nothing but it is your uh, whatever the distance that you have got it's a straight path that you have got between your uh, upstream point to that of your downstream point so that length of the soil itself is what we are considering it as your distance traveled by your water particle but length of the soil through which the soil uh, water is trying to travel cannot be exactly considered as your uh, distance traveled by your water particle while traveling from upstream to downstream okay the exact distance traveled by the water particle from uh, while traveling from upstream to downstream cannot be considered as your uh, distance between those initial point to that of your uh, final point but in a simplified in a, in a simplified manner we consider your distance traveled by, uh, by your water particle or length of seepage is nothing but it is equal to the distance between one point to the other point uh, from where to where your uh, flow is happening in that particular uh, soil medium okay so here is one parameter which we will try to introduce that's nothing but it is hydraulic gradient so depending on the hydraulic gradient that is existing in that particular uh, soil deposit your amount of flow that is expected to be uh, flowing from upstream to that of downstream is going to be governed okay so what is this hydraulic gradient means hydraulic gradient is nothing but sim in a simplest manner it is nothing but it is called as a slope of your uh, free water surface what you could see when the water is trying to travel from upstream to that of your downstream so in the other way this hydraulic gradient can also be represented as hydraulic gradient is generally indicated by the notation small i okay where this hydraulic gradient is given as the ratio of total head difference between upstream to downstream which is governing the flow that is happening through the soil divided by length of seepage okay so length of seepage here in this case is simply nothing but the distance what your water particle traveled from point one to point two which is simply equal to your length of the soil sample okay so l here generally indicates 
the length of seepage in the expression of hydraulic gradient. So hydraulic gradient is basically defined as the ratio of uh, total head difference between the upstream to downstream divided by length of seepage. What is the length that your water particle has traveled to move from upstream to downstream? Okay, so hydraulic gradient is expressed as I is equal to delta H by L, where uh, delta H indicates your total head difference between upstream to downstream. Okay, this much is the total head difference between the upstream to downstream. So how do we calculate that total head difference between point A to point B means calculate what is the total head available at point A, calculate what is the total head available at point B. So total head available at point A minus total head available at point B tells you how much is your total head difference between upstream to downstream. And because of the total head difference between upstream to downstream, the flow is going to be happening through the soil from one point to the other point. Now in the process when the flow is happening from one point to the other point through the soil, then what is that distance? least distance that your water particle is expected to travel so that no water particle can move from point A to point B in that soil medium. So the least distance means it's obviously the straight path that your water particle can travel is what is considered as your least path. So the ratio of your total head difference between uh, to that of your uh, least distance what your water particle has traveled that's nothing but your distance between point, one, uh, point A to point B. So that distance the shortest distance so that distance is what we call it as your length of seepage. Okay, so we'll stop our discussion for today here.